Hello, hello and welcome friends. Welcome to another episode of the Horn of Africa TV. With you, I'm Elias Samare. And with me as always also my good friend and comrade, uh, Professor Mohammed Hassan. He has been recently visiting the region, the Horn of Africa. He's been to Ethiopia and Kenya. So welcome, Mohammed. We miss you. Uh, how was it? How was your trip? How, how, how long did you stay in Ethiopia and Kenya? Uh, overall, uh, I have stayed about three weeks. Uh, when I left from here, uh, uh, I was thinking, uh, knowing the situation in the country uh, and knowing also the relationship between the federal government and the uh, PPLF Dunta was ending. Uh, I was following, I was traveling frequently to Ethiopia. And I was following it very closely, uh, uh, the relationship uh, every time with the federal government. And yes, in fact, uh, during the past two years and a half after uh, the reform was ushered, you've been to Ethiopia several times and you've been interviewed by the uh, various television stations in Ethiopia, I believe, uh, uh, I think about three or four, if I'm not mistaken. Indeed, indeed, indeed. It is uh, uh, the understanding of uh, uh, TPLF uh, uh, tactics and strategy was not very clear for a lot of people in Ethiopia and uh, also in diaspora. Uh, once they were removed from the power, of, uh, from the center of the power from Addis Ababa, they removed themselves uh, to Tigray and for them they consider it like uh, uh, a long march uh, back to power. Yes, all this you have, you and I have covered in four episodes mm -hmm. focusing on Ethiopia, the Horn of Africa, and beyond uh, Syria. Uh. Mm -hmm. So we will put for our viewers in the description section below the links to those four uh, episodes. Uh, they will give them good background uh, to familiarize themselves. So this is going to be the fifth then of our continuing series on Ethiopia, the Horn of Africa, and beyond. So uh, forgive my interruption, but uh, continue. Uh, uh, when I arrived in Addis Ababa, uh, and I watched uh, in, uh, in the evening the television, I sensed that it is uh, uh, the public diplomacy, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed was doing the politic of appeasement who did toward PPLF, it was in the end or at the end of the tunnel. TPLF uh, felt and misread uh, the intention of the Prime Minister as if it is a weakness. And uh, they mobilized the so-called their population, they celebrated the 45th year of their anniversary. And then uh, when the parliament uh, extended uh, uh, that election will not be held because of the corona, uh, they were emboldened, emboldened in a sense, the two year and a half, the strategy of uh, the TPLF was uh, 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 try to weaken the federal government by creating difficulties and conflicts in all over Ethiopia. Through uh, the cells, they assume that they have created and uh, inciting inter-ethnic conflicts like in Banishungul, inciting also inter-ethnic uh, inter conflict in Wallaga, in Oromia, inciting inter-ethnic conflict uh, uh, between the Afars and the Somalis, and so on. And this mm. continued. It, it, it seemed that uh, there was no part in Ethiopia that uh, that was that had uh, peace, except maybe perhaps the Somali region. 
Indeed. That was the exception, I think, yeah? Yes, that was the exception. Uh, 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 their major strategy was uh, uh, to weaken the federal government by encircling it in trouble, which is means putting fire everywhere and probably also uh, uh, smuggling weapons every time. Since Prime Minister Abiy came mm. to, to the power, uh, the Addis Ababa police have discovered a lot of armament it was the TPLF was trying to smuggle in into Addis Ababa. Their main base is also to create a chaotic situation to, uh, in Addis Ababa itself, probably also try to kill prominent uh, 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 individuals and elements and uh, government officials as they have tried to kill from the beginning the prime minister himself. Mm -hmm. So the police uh, successfully foiled this attempt that have captured a lot of weapons, light uh, weapons, money. Uh, uh, basically, the uh, money was the sources they are using and they had billions and billions and trillions of burr in their hand, smuggling it everywhere, inciting and so and so on. This is their, one of their strategies. The second strategy is that also to delegitimize the federal government in a sense by inciting that the federalism will collapse. There will be, um, Prime Minister Abi wants to create like the old unitary state and so on and so on. And this kind of propaganda also was going deep and even confused certain segments of Ethiopians, which is not uh, uh, a reality. Of course, uh, 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 Prime Minister Abiy, when you analyze now back in two years and a half and until this uh, uh, situation, he did it very good, excellent, uh, you could say. It is... Uh, uh, their main purpose is that first to show that he have no uh, 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 idea for the country, he have no idea or, or, or a mapping for the future, for immediate future, uh, delegitimizing him as a person who is a charlatan, I have no ability to rule this country with such a complicated problems. So in one side is delegitimizing the prime minister himself, that he is not aware what's happening. He is, in fact, it is a mayor of Addis Ababa rather than being a prime minister of the country. The second is gradually, which uh, uh, brought in by TPLF propagandists and sales in Addis Ababa among the intelligentsia, among so-called political forces, and also outside of that, the, the propaganda, the usual TPLF propaganda recycled that Eritrean intelligence service are the, uh, uh, helping Prime Minister Abiy, even they are the one the special commando of Eritrea is protecting him, that Eritreans are the one who in fact will uh, uh, control the country and so on and so on, which is statistically impossible, logically is impossible, but it is the relationship which uh, Prime Minister Abiy and the government of Eritrea and President Isaias built with the concept of having a new Horn of Africa where all nations and countries, they can work together for a bright future. That also and in, in this, of course, uh, Somalia also has joined Somalia under uh, all, all President all Formaggio. Indeed, uh, the, uh, the, the tripartite agreement in Asmara and the uh, multilateral relations between Ethiopia and Eritrea. This, it has to be painted black that in a way that people can get frustrated and they don't see any hope and that situation is really very dark and it is the only one who is able to rule that country and to manage it is the Junta TPLA. This is also a psychological welfare in one side and the second side it is, is a terrorist type of, uh, a terrorist type of, uh, of uh, organization trying to create cells everywhere inside and so on among the people, create military conflict and so on. So in fact, they wanted to put sand on the eye of the people that the majority of the people could get confused and the government also could get confused. But their reading was very shallow. When I arrived in Addis Ababa, 
Uh, I was talking to some comrade and to President Mustafa of the Somali region. I realized and I have to... To, to whom you are a special advisor. A special advisor. Uh, to the president of the Somali region. Uh, Somali region. We had uh, the a great... Uh, visionary young leader Mustafa Umar, if I may say so. I'm a bit biased, but... Yes, he is, he is. So when I met him, I told him, is, I think it is the water has reached a boiling point. That uh, 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 two masters cannot rule one house. The TPLF have reached it to the extent that it is, it have said, organized its own election legally, uh, it rejected the, the proposal of the parliament. All the public diplomacy the prime minister did also, it was rejected by TPLF. And finally, they have said that it is, they will not accept any kind of uh, uh, law which is uh, uh, and, and, uh, and relation with the federal government. According to the TPLF, the prime minister's uh, legitimacy has ended and therefore there is no legal government in the country. In, a such a uh, in this, uh, uh, Comrade Mohammed, did you sense uh, in, in our previous discussions with you, uh, we were more or less uh, on the same page that uh, Dr. Abiy Ahmed, the prime minister was appeasing the TPLF too much. He was too patient and too, too conciliatory towards them uh, and not dealing uh, in the proper uh, legal context. Uh, did you sense that on the ground in Ethiopia, there was that kind of feeling also from the population that uh, the patience was, uh, was uh, over, I sense overextended? It. Yes, with uh, several times when I traveled to Ethiopia, I sense that because it is uh, uh, you, it is a double situation. When the TPLF was overthrown, the population ha had hated the TPLF so extremely, uh, uh, they could have uh, been killed, a lot of people could have been killed. It is thanks to the Prime Minister Abiy that calmed the, the anger of the population and canalized and he said that it is uh, very few, as he said, this uh, hyenas of the day. Daytime hyenas. Uh, daytime hyenas. They are the only ones who are responsible, but the masses uh, of uh, uh, Tigray, they are our brothers and sisters and so on. In fact, mm -hmm. Prime Minister Abiy made a very good uh, speech and a favor for uh, 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 the people of Tigray. Without him, they could have been uh, a lot of conflicts and a lot of Tigrayans could have been uh, killed. Uh, he calmed the Ethiopian population. The past is over. The masses of Tigray, they are not responsible for what happened. These few hyenas who are responsible, who run away and now hiding behind the children and women in Tigray. And this we will deal about it. And this is one of his positive, which they didn't, TPLF never expected such a wild uh, uh, speech from the pri young prime minister because of you, the you, you think they underestimate they his uh, his capacity him. to lead yes yes and they didn't understand that it is his way of speaking and uh, very frank and straightforward and calming is not a man of vendetta and vengeance and so on that it has helped and for that it is he have to be Thanked that he mm -hmm. have averted the danger, uh, 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 which everybody was expecting that uh, Tigrayan civilians could be killed outside of Tigray, and that was the purpose of the TPLF. So, point one: there were there were also pandits or uh, the educated class in Addis Ababa, the uh, the intelligentsia who were urging the prime minister to take the sword, uh, too much of this uh, biblical preaching of a pastor type of uh, love and medemer of uh, unity and uh, all that, that doesn't work. You have to be uh, strong uh, to show capa capability. Ethiopia only understands the sword. <laughs> 
Yeah. Uh, 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 there were uh, quite a few of them. Yes, they were saying that it is, uh, he have to take a, a hard line and, and, and he have to show that it is, he is the one who's controlling the center and he have to decide as fast as possible uh, in a, a strongest term, as they call it. But I think his strategy was successful in the sense that if he had followed that line, it could have brought uh, a big damage to the country and a lot of innocent people could have been killed for unnecessary uh, stage. So TPLF expected that. The but Mohammed, uh, some will say that in the past two years and a half, a lot of people actually were killed in various parts Indeed. of the country, you know, Romia, in Gucci Gedeo, in Ben Shungul, in Walaga, in Amhara. That is true. But uh, relatively, if uh, uh, the moment the TPLF was overthrown and the anger was very, very hot, and if it was not canalized, the killing rate would have been uh, other Rwanda. A level of genocidal, uh, genocidal Rwanda type Rwanda scenario. Type and on that, he was clever enough that not to fall in this trap, and he calmed. In fact, what he did is a, a psychological therapy to the Ethiopian people. Don't look to your anger, look to the future. This was his strategy. And of mm -hmm. course, uh, uh, a lot of people looked at him as a very weak. Uh, he is not able, uh, with the tradition of that country, Everybody who's coming to power, it have to bang to the table and it have to shout and make a lot of noise yeah. and so and so on. He didn't the, do the, the traditional leader has the to be authoritarian, leader, strong man. Strong man and so on. He didn't do that. And uh, 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 when I see it now, uh, it's clever of him. The first thing he, he, he did is that and he was very bold and uh, without even hesitating, is to create the relationship and peaceful relationship and with Eritrea. That is it's a very bold stand of him, which mm -hmm. is uh, uh, a lot of people never uh, didn't expect. He is the one who cleverly understood that it is the major problem first is that we have to resolve and be friendly and, and, and have a common understanding with our neighbors Eritrea. That have and the twenty of the some time. years of war situation and uh, accept Indeed. the Algiers peace agreement in total. Exactly, that broke the back of the horse of the TPLA. Uh, Visionary uh, from the get go, from the very beginning, he set the tone. In his, yes. you remember in his parliament opening speech, uh, I believe in April of two thousand eighteen. Uh, yes. Yes. Everybody was uh, was kind of uh, very surprised. Indeed, and uh, by doing that, he really he, more than fifty or sixty percent of the problem uh, the country was facing, he have resolved it, uh, and he changed uh, another atmosphere. And this is, was not expected by the uh, the gang who have left Addis Ababa and uh, and, and and went to Tigray. For them, it was it was a taboo. It was impossible that the prime minister of Ethiopia will, will cross this red line. But uh, uh, Prime Minister Abi was brave enough uh, 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 that uh, he break that line and he understood that it is, there must be peace between the two countries and the bilateral relation must be back, the diplomatic relation uh, uh, must be resumed and so on. And Eritrea equally responded to this. And both of them, they have signed the agreement in Asmara. And then all the so-called Ethiopian opposition, of Ethiopian opposition, armed opposition in Eritrea, they have signed also an agreement and all of them came back home. So in that sense, he did the first step and break the back of the TPLF. Then TPLF, as I have said, continued in its second strategy, assuming that they were stronger, and they will not be touched. Mm -hmm. and the central but, but, but before you go there, uh, Professor Mohammed, uh, to non-Ethiopians, the question uh, that may baffle them is, why did the TPLF uh, flee to Tigray in a sort of helter, helter 
skelter manner and and organize as if uh, uh, you know they abandoned the capital at Addis Ababa. What uh, worried them, or what was it that scared them? That uh, uh, was it uh, the decisive uh, firing of the security chief, perhaps, and other uh, moves like that by the prime minister? First of all, once the prime minister, when he came to power and he became prime minister, uh, the understanding of the TPLF that it is prime minister Abi, he will not walk faster. But he would be another Haile Mariam the Salin, the, the previous uh, prime minister. Probably a bit different from Haile Mariam, but the same type. Uh, the, the, somebody like a figurehead they can control. Uh, they can control and so so. So the prime minister had three objectives when he came to power. In a sense that it is he was much better, clever man than uh, his friends. Uh, first, uh, uh, he made sure that it is the TPLF uh, intelligence service must be removed. The the security uh, the national the national service. intelligence and security service NISS yes yes that have to be which removed. was led by Getacho Asafa uh, dominated by Tigrayans uh, of the TPLF yeah. essentially. So the first thing he did is that. Uh, how many uh, uh, under the the security apparatus, the the staff, the operatives, the the killers, the informants. Uh, the ballpark estimate figure would be how, how much? I mean, uh, the, uh, uh, the security which is led by uh, uh, this man is about 100,000. 100,000, yeah. And that's, was, that's a huge uh, bureaucracy. Yes, it is. Uh, this is uh, from the mouth of the former Prime Minister, the Salim himself. And it is having the biggest uh, uh, budget of the country, more than even the defense force. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, that uh, security would have melted first with the popular uprise, then secondly, when Prime Minister uh, Abiy came, he removed the, uh, uh, the head mm -hmm. of this uh, security. And what was its task uh, under the TPLF, uh, its main objective, such a huge... Uh... Because for the, the TPLF, since it came to power in 1991 and so on, the first thing they did is that building uh, a very strong uh, intelligence service. It is the, mo the most important pillar which control the country. It is not the army. The army is a secondary. It's a mishmash of militia, you could say even though they have armed infantry and so on. So the, this uh, intelligence service, about 20% of the elite who control the intelligence service, they came from the TPLF and majority of them are civilians. But those who are collecting the soldiers on the foot, who are collecting the information, they came from all other nationalities. And once this information brought in, it will be recouped again, analyzed, translated into Tigrinya, and it will be brought up to the decision making. This is the way TPLF had worked. Secondly, of course, the army. In the army, if you take about uh, 65 uh, generals, uh, 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 the Artigrians, most of the officers, the Artigrians, most of it, and those who are controlling the most sensitive part of the army, they were Tigrians. So um, given this situation and a popular revolt have come and the TPLF have melted the light ice cream, that Prime Minister Abiy, when he arrived, there is a homework he has to achieve. And this homework can, cannot be dealt publicly with the public. The first thing he did is that to make the psychology of the people calm and the concept and the hate which have accumulated for the last 27, 27 years, not to be exploded and then turned into genocide and killing. So he diverted that. And that it is, he did a real job, which TPLF wanted that certain genocide can happen outside of Tigray on Tigrayans, and then they can mobilize their population even more nationalist and in defense mechanism and so and so. So that they have removed from their foot that carpet, and they could not make a comparative advantage against them. Of course, the second, the most important pillar is his peace 
with Eritrea. This also is not expected by TPLF. TPLF thought this man will not walk for a mile and he will not do or he will not dare to do this taboo, which they have called taboo, they have created that antagonism between the people of Eritrea and the people of Ethiopia is so antagonistic they cannot see each other and so on. So what we have painted in that country, the anti-Eritrean sentiment, the anti-Eritrean feeling, it is so deep anchored that it is this prime minister, he cannot break that taboo. So the prime minister brave enough that it was not anchored and the Ethiopian people, they have no any antagonism towards the people and the government of Eritrea. He accepted that decision on the basis, he spoke in the parliament, and then finally he went to Asmara and signed. This also is another big blow for the TPLA. Uh, having done this, then he joined. But before that, also he fired the the hated uh, security chief uh, Getacho Asafa. Indeed, he fired and other uh, and other uh, accomplices in the security the apparatus. The man who's ruling the country, literally. He fired him, and uh, of course, he engineered against him uh, to assassinate Abi. Uh, he didn't succeed. So, Amatarish, he fired him, and because he's fired, big part of his uh, agent, the Tigrayan, also, they fled with him, too. The other thing is, uh, uh, Prime Minister Abi, he has to work very slowly in the reorganizing the army. So, about uh, slowly, he have the top officials of army have been reorganized. Those who are unfavorable to the change have been removed or brought in into uh, 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 pension. Uh, uh, and they were told that, thank you, you, know, you have served your country and so on. And, and he worked also on that, reorganizing slowly inside the army. Despite the TPLF was continuing with the strategy of chaos, creating war between Somalis and Afars there at the border between the two communities, inciting smuggling weapons every, everywhere, inciting everywhere, creating inter-ethnic conflicts everywhere. But the prime minister, uh, uh, a lot of people told So the, the, uh, that means then, while the TPLF is safe in its uh, base hiding in in the northernmost province in Tigray, they were still able to, through their cell networks, uh, the former security ap apparatus uh, agents, or uh, to, to create chaos all over the country? Indeed, because the reading... You could not, I mean, the government could not control that? They did all the... All, uh, 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 the, in fact, uh, they didn't uh, uh, openly now uh, explain that it is hundreds of times that weapons are supposed to be smuggled to Addis was captured. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of other uh, 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 stabilization uh, tactic were also by the police and by the intelligence services foiled and so on. Uh, because the understanding of the TPLF and the painting of the character of the prime minister as a weak person, and we can eliminate him. The other important thing the prime minister did is that the so-called EPRD. EPRD never existed, as I have explained. In the Explain uh, yeah, to, to have, uh, non Ethiopians what the EPRDF was, the, the umbrella. EPRDF is, in fact, it is like, uh, I don't know how, uh, how many of you, you have seen this Indian uh, a small car which called uh, tuk tuk in Arabic, or in Amharic it's called the bajaj. This is uh, the, the three wheeled, uh, three wheeled car. vehicle, small vehicle, like uh, I think the Italians have a lambretta type of. Exactly, it's uh, 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 it is like that. That uh, the driver is a Tigrinya speaker, which is the TPLA, controls this small car, and it is alliance is the three tires. The three tires who doesn't speak, who doesn't hear, who doesn't see, and 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 they just follow uh, where the driver is leading them, and these are the alliance within the EPRD, the Oromo. These are the three proxy organizations. Uh, indeed, indeed, which uh, have no any say in 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 the decision. To give you one example, uh, when you ask them, 
how it was possible that you people uh, 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 waged the war and you created problem uh, and you said that Eritrea had invaded us. In what basis that you have uh, announced that? They tell you, we were not informed. It was only the driver, the 30 Tigrians, about seven Politburo and 23 Central Committee members. They made secretly a meeting in the Amhara region capital, Bahardar, and they are the one who decided it is not the EPRDF. The EPRDF is a rubber stamp who doesn't exist, have no even life, and doesn't freeze and cannot see. So the prime minister understood that. So the first thing he did is also he dismantled the EPRDF. And when he dismantled EPRDF, the TPLF main organ, as I have mentioned, first was the army and the security, then is the army, and then is the party, the major, which they sit on the top and they control everybody. And that also he dismantled from them. And this, they have never expected the TPLF, they will be in a, such a worse situation. So he says, no, this is not a party, this is a domination, and I have created a party called Prosperity. Everybody can join from whatever group they are and whatever nationality and region they are. And he created a party and he said to the TPLF, welcome, if you want, you can join. But TPLF mm -hmm. cannot join this organization because they wanted to rule Ethiopia again and they wanted to dominate. So, so essentially by dismantling the EPRDF, he uh, dismantled the minority rule of the Absolutely. PLF. Yeah. That is the dismantled. That is what the interviews I did also with television Fana, I said, it is a good step toward the building in Ethiopia. This minority uh, 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 dominated fake party must be dismantled. It have never been a party and there was no, uh, the logo is that Ethiopia People Revolutionary Party and so on. That is a logo, it is a fake logo, but in reality is a domination of TPLF. When he dismantled that, it was too late for TPLF. There is no way, or they have to join the, the Prosperity Party and be a minority as anybody else within the party, and their influence will be limited as all our, our, our other groups. So he really thought about it in a sense that he dismantled the three the important pillar of the TPLF domination in that country. For that, I have always supported it. I was the man who was saying it has to be dismantled. This is a fake. It is a, a, an apartheid party where the majority of Ethiopians have no say and a the minority, they cook everything to the, in the night and they bring and they eat whatever the best part of it and then impose on the Ethiopian people through this organization. In fact, it is mm -hmm. like uh, fake federalism. Uh... Uh, the federalism also it is fake. It is not. It is you, they created a so-called federal organization EPRDF, but it's not federal. It is one ethnic-dominated party, and it's imposing from above on the states and then on the people. Then the so-called federalism, which the prime minister also said, as I say, there was no federalism in Ethiopia. It is in name only. It is a name and it is a means of ruling. It is, uh, if you see the structure, it is logical. If uh, uh, a minority can only do that, huh? it, it, it has its own army, it has its own security, but 80% of the intelligence, they come from the masses, from all Ethiopia, but the decision maker, the 20% are Tigrinya speakers. So you have security within security. You have in the army the same. The majority of the of those who are carrying the weapon, they are non-Tigrians, but the most important organ are decision makers and so on who control the army, all are Tigrians. So this is uh, as far as the state concerned. The same also in the bureaucracy you see, in the economic sector you see, the same in the party. Also in the in the regional states, the Kilils, uh, they, they never had any autonomy to administer themselves. It's uh, Not, always... No, the Kilil is controlled by a ministry, which is led by Abbas Sahaye, is a Tigrayan. He, they call it the Ministry of Federal Affairs. Ministry of Federal Affairs is exactly like Ministry of Colonies, whereby a Tigrayan from the top, he sits and he can write whatever he wants, order the federal states, the Kilils, and so on, remove whom he wants, uh, install whom he wants. So the four fundamental pillars, which control five, in fact, 
fundamental pillar of TPLF had control is one is the so-called EPRD of the party, but it is literally a Tigrayan party controlling. Second is the security, literally is the control under the Tigrayan uh, uh, leadership. The army literally controlled under the Tigrayan, and the Kalils literally controlled with a new framework that it is Federal Affairs uh, Ministry, but it is on the top, is the Tigrayan man. So oh, this is and, uh, and yeah. then of course the system of kleptocracy whereby that they loot and plunder the economy. Pillar. Indeed, that is the fifth pillar. In the process, in the 27 years, they have looted the the, the country and they create a lot of parasitical organizations in the name of effort and so and so on. And this is the economic giant of Ethiopia. And this economic giant belong to the TPLF and the people of Tigray. As the chairman said it, this is our wealth, our money, and so and so on. And they own the whole economy of the country, and they throw little pieces there and there for their servants around. So the economy mm -hmm. is dominated in such way. The state is dominated with the four pillars I have put in, and uh, this is 27 years. The other pillar done, once you have this structure, is every five years, the fake election they make. And, and of course, when they are defeated, then they kill, they arrest, and so on. And, 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 and that election commission belongs to them. They do whatever they want with the election. Mm. They eliminate candidates. Sometimes they win 100% of the elections, rig, and... Uh... Yeah, indeed. And this is supported by external forces, that the election commission, it is in joint commission with Committee of Ambassadors of Western countries, with the chairman of, uh, uh, of this uh, committee of ambassadors, most of the time is American ambassador. They are the donors who bring a car, money, and so on and so on. So it is well organized, the mafia eh, controls the country. So they thought, okay, popular uprise came and brought us into uh, difficulties. And then they didn't expect that it will, situation will change in a faster straight. And their understanding and reading is very, very poor. Then finally, they run away to Tigray. Now, there, once they want for them, from there, they cannot stay in Addis Ababa. They might be captured as an individual. And this will be, a, 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 their second strategy cannot be implemented. They chose for the long march to go to Tigray. Then from Tigray, a step-by-step -step continued destabilization of the country. And for so basically, say, in the past two years and a half, while safely ensconced in Tigray, uh, nobody dared to touch them there. They, that was like their stronghold where the federal indeed. government could not uh, Indeed, for several intervene. reasons, indeed, for several reasons they went over there. First, it is their base area, as they assume, will mobilize the Tigray people, will create militias and so on. And the other major thing which brought them is that the control that it is a big part of the Ethiopian army was stationed at the border with Eritrea. And this is the most equipped army and, and, and so on, and it is stationed for more than 20 years there. In the first, when the station is there, they wanted to play double role. One is that big part of the budget of the army was, exp uh, was, 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 was exported to Tigray, and Tigrayan generals and Tigrayan business people, they were making a big business out of it. For example, the uh, uh, General Sadkan, he is the only provider for beer, uh, Niala beer, uh, uh, whatever uh, beer is called, is provider for the army. It's, uh, it was called Raya beer, I think. Raya yeah. beer, yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. And the other, if I'm a Tigrayan, I bring the clothes, uh, uh, you bring... Yeah, Almeda, Charka Charka, or textile was providing it's the uniforms, yeah. Everything from salt, from shoes, from food, daily food, from uh, soft drinks and so on. So, so in that sense, big part of the economy of the country also remains in Tigray in the name of defending the border and in the, mm. in the name of defending the sovereignty of the country. So this is another pillar of the- War was a racket for the TPLF. It was a good yes. lucrative business now. Indeed, and it is economically also Big part of the economy, big part of the budget. Uh, the army generals army enrich general. themselves, uh, yes. colonels. Indeed. Indeed. They can enrich themselves very quick. 
And second, uh, as they did, for example, in the Somali region with contraband. Did, yes, and, contraband. Uh, through contraband they did. But here is through official budgeting in the name of defending national sovereignty and so on and so on. So no question and no discussion happened what's happening there, whether it is in the parliament, because the parliament is theirs. They were dominating it as they want. You could you imagine in a parliament of 500 and something, 80, that it is 39 members dominate all the parliament and the voice and so on. They control everything. So the parliament is another pillar of the domination of TPLF of a minority. So all what state structures, according to their own constitutions, is under the control of TPLF and this minority. So, the ex so are essentially, uh, Professor Mohammed, you're saying that throughout the past two years and a half, actually the prime minister, Dr. Abi Ahmed, was step by step patiently uh, loosening the screws and dismantling the TPLF hegemony uh, until things reached to this point were... Uh, indeed, indeed. That is that is the part that a lot of people couldn't read the mind of the Prime Minister, the young Prime Minister. I, I, I could say he is a very clever man. Uh, 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 assume that if you come to power after the popular revolt and so on, so on and you sit on that, and in fact, you are sitting on a fire, and, and from where you will start? It is, it is, what are the wires which have connected the TPLF to rule this country? You have to have an autopsy of TPLF, how it have ruled this country. What are the most important pillars which kept this minority who are uncivilized gangs, uh, can rule a such a huge country of 110 million? What are the structures, apart from the support they are getting from external forces and being an agent of destabilization of the region, that's another issue. But internally, they have to prove they are cohesive, they are dominant, and so on and so on. So they proved to their masters they are clever enough and they are shrewd enough. They can maneuver the Ethiopian people, and the Ethiopian people are in a sleepy. In fact, as if it is, they were giving a sleeping injection for a very long time. The debate, when you see within the TPLF, they believed that they can rule that country for 80 years and probably for 100 years. And it came from the idea that it is the country is so paralyzed and it is uh, injected by the TPLF morphine and is sleeping for deep and it will take them very long time to get awakened. But it is not true. In the contrary, if you analyze, there was everywhere a revolt against the TPLF. But they didn't want to see because they say we are dominant. Nothing will happen to us. External forces are showering us. They are supporting us. We have the army, we have the security, we have the bureaucracy, we have the money, we control the central bank, we control all private banks, we control the economy. Nobody can push us. But the unintended consequence, it came to them and the popular revolt of four The years, power, uh, the hubris and arrogance of power fooled them in a sense yes. that... Uh, yes. It gave them a false sense of security and uh, nothing would touch them. And I think because so, of though, that, uh, this uh, young prime minister, though, must have studied them carefully, you know, in their weaknesses. And uh, I do think because uh, his, would you say that the, his background in the army and then later in the intelligence uh, helped uh, a lot, for example, as compared to the previous prime minister, Haile Mariam de Salen? I think his his background uh, before he was in army, I think what influenced him to see the things clearer is where he was born. Uh, he was born in a very small city in Jima. A, a small the town more. Right? Yeah, a town, uh, a predominantly Muslim family, uh, a Muslim area. Probably with his upbringing, uh, 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 he, he didn't read uh, 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 his upbringing is, is not, not in the psychology of Abyssinians. Mm. This man is from an Oromo family. Uh, 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 his upbringing and his atmosphere is totally different. So his experience in 
later on when he joined the APRD and, and joined the army, he reads things differently from others because of this background of him. And that you cannot remove. And this is as an example I see when he became a, a soldier and, and he was stationed when uh, uh, the TPLA waged war against Eritrea. This is as a, a, a intelligence uh, within the army. He was stationed in Badimba for very long mm-hmm. time. So if you uh, analyze all those people who have been stationed in Badimba in that area, none of them made the effort to study the local language. Tigrinya. Tigrinya. So this, mm-hmm. this, this gave him an insight. I mean, uh, he could easily learn the language. He could easily also see and communicate with the people of Tigray and so on and their difficulties. And so understand had, their psychology, their culture, their, and, uh, their culture their... including their ruling class. So this had helped him. In co- comparatively, there were more uh, officers in that part from all over uh, Ethiopia and so on, but nobody did the efforts to learn the language where you live. And this by itself is an effort one a young man did, and for that understood what his Tigray is, and it became very clear for him. I think this is his comparative advantage. And he understood also the nature of how TPLF ruled this country. Because immediately after he took over the prime minister, and he said there, after a while, he published his book. Uh, one can agree or disagree about his, his prosperity party. But he have understood that the most important pillar of ruler of ruling Ethiopia, TPLF was ruling, is through this fake party. And this party must be eliminated. And he removed them. So now they were cornered. If they continue the discussion with him and they become his member of his party, there will be a minority and probably after a while that court case will come against them. So finally he cornered them. They reached to the conclusion, we have to remove this man. First, if we can kill him, it's okay. That will be the best way. If not, by creating a strategy of chaos, creating difficulties everywhere, bring demoralizing the population that the population will see him a very weak man and so on and so on everywhere crisis will be the confidence of the Ethiopian people will sink to zero or below below zero and so and so on and those who cannot read things in a very deep they might get quickly frustrated they will say that the Tigrayans who looted also they are around they are occupying their own buildings what they in, in Addis Ababa Business as usual is going on. On the contrary, now they are creating problems everywhere and this and this. And what they have inculcated in the mind of the population, whether it's the population of Tigray or Ethiopia, that they are in, uh, 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 stronger, they are better organized than this and this. And this idea also is inside of the Western ambassadors and embassies in Addis Ababa. Tigray is brave, strong, they have the a uh, strong army, they can fight. They, that is why the propaganda now says it would. It is a civil war. It will go for long uh, conflict. There must be a mediation and all and all this. But the prime minister knew it is. It, it is. These are just a bunch of uh, uh, paper tigers, so to paper speak. tigers, and so on. Finally, things when it continued like this and it reached to hundred percent. Of course, it evaporated. Finally, they were obliged to attack the Ethiopian army. And they wanted to take the weapon of Ethiopian army. Mm-hmm. This have triggered, and now they are encircled in Makale, and probably soon they will be captured or eliminated. And this yeah, but before this, uh, the, the, the final the straw that broke the camel back on, uh, I think on Monday, November 2, when they attacked the National Army Base in in, uh, in Tigray, near Maghale, uh, to capture some strategic heavy weaponry, missiles, and, and what have you. Uh, this they have openly admitted now, by the way, uh, one of their uh, members of the leadership uh, by the name of Sekutere Getacho has openly admitted that they 
they did uh, uh, blitzkrieg, you know, lightning attack uh, in the dead of the night and were successful in capturing weapons, he said. I don't know why they admitted, but... Uh, uh, but before this uh, final, the red line was crossed, they also have been, for the past two years, uh, training militias, uh, war rhetoric, uh, threatening, and constantly drumming up in, to, their, to the population of Tigray that uh, you are in circle, everybody hates you, we are your only defense, uh, you know, to the north there is Eritrea, the Amharas hate you. Uh, the Prime Minister Abi is against us. So they, they, they sort of use this constant propaganda of uh, isolation and fear uh, in, the, in the population of Tigray, wouldn't you say, in the past uh, two years? Indeed. Uh, 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 since they went back to Tigray, uh, uh, their main base is that as they consider it to mobilize the Tigrayan people and creating a fear mongering and so on and uh, uh, containing, that is one, uh, until the celebration and the election. Second, they wanted to make Makale as the Mecca of what they call the Mecca of federalism. Well, since when is TPL a federalist state? Is the hegemonist that there was no federalism in Ethiopia? So in mm. this way that it is also, it will be a training base that they can bring people from other regions, train them and send them back as an agent to destabilize and to delegitimize the prime minister. But the prime minister- From other parts of Ethiopia, you're saying? Yes, from other parts of Ethiopia. But the prime minister understood that. When I'm re reading him very closely, uh, what he did is that it is, uh, at the end, he knew that it will come to final decision to confrontation and confrontation. So uh, one of the reason of the confrontation before attacking the army is that the decision of the prime minister and his government uh, using a new policy, a new policy in a sense that the monetary policy, which changing the currency. Uh, the central bank know how many money have printed. Then they know how many uh, of hundred is printed. They know all the money because it is the central bank and the governor of the central bank, who is the one in the name of the government issues. So the prime minister have a clear cut that the monetary, the money, which is in their hand, particularly Ethiopian money in their hand, and so Cash in circulation, yeah. Circulation and so on. So by transforming and changing that currency eh, for several reasons and bringing a new currency, this make sure that it is they were exposed and the limit of bringing money and changing every day, it was limited and it was uh, through the proclamation was made. So even though agents who have stolen a lot of money and so on, they became within 24 hours in a big shit and a big problem. They start even burning their own money because once you bring a money beyond your income, you have to be asked, that is one, so, uh, the change of the money. Immediately, simultaneously with that, the government decided that no properties can be transferred and sold. So they kept, they say, uh, 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 no properties, because they knew TPLF, uh, after money was, was the monetary policies was implemented on it, then they will, in order to get the new money, they will try to sell their own properties, which is a property which is stolen from Ethiopian people, and so on. And that it is also put in, Right, they say no, don't register, and no registration and no sale uh, will happen until things become clear. This made them more nervous, and and the more the central government and and the prime minister is step by step is weakening the body of the TPLF, and uh, their strategy is weakening the strategy of chaos. Finally, they are obliged to go to confrontation. He he pushed them to the extent that they ha the, the real nature have to come. Finally, as you have said, they have to attack the army to take uh, uh, the weaponry. army and so on and so on. And they have declared the war. This term, uh, uh, already they were illegal since uh, they have uh, made their fake uh, election 
and then uh, pick parliament of them and denying the prime minister the legitimacy over Tigray and saying that it is we don't accept uh, anything comes from the center. We are legitimate and he is illegitimate. And this all step when you see, they are foolish. In fact, they are not clever people. Uh, uh, they, they didn't get before smart people who can deal with them. Once they melt out from the power, the minister played it. He outmaneuvered them uh, in all political, yeah. in justice terms, in economic yeah. terms, and in uh, every in every sense of uh, he outmaneuvered them. And now, of course, they are at the end of the tunnel. They will be killed or captured, and uh, of course, he will be very popular in Ethiopia. Now the question, uh, why is uh, the Western media, uh, so-called the corporate media, the, the big uh, media outlets, uh, the pundits, the so-called uh, experts, uh, analysts, why are they so keen to portray uh, this as if it is a civil war, as if, uh, you know, this is a grave danger to the whole region, that it can spill over to to Eritrea, to Sudan, and what have you, and uh, they insinuate Egypt, maybe. Mm, and they, they, they try to pump up the, the TPLF as, it is, as if it is a big, major power. Uh, what is the reasoning behind that? I mean... Uh, it is several points. One is uh, the image building that they did for TPLF and EPLF also uh, made an image building uh, as if they are in, uh, uh, the strongest, imbrocable, invisible, uh, and so and so on, while they are just uh, 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 ice cream, so who can melt very easily, not under the sun, even under the moon. Uh, that is TPLF. TP, uh, they don't understand the TPLF is mechanism. If they understood some of them, yes, they will keep quiet. So the image building, TPLF is a very strong... Very or is it a deliberate uh, disinformation? Yeah. From a Western point of view, it's a deliberate. Because they will never find a servant like them. That's the major thing, which destabilized the region for the last 27 years. The, uh, so it's a deliberate. You cannot find a mercenary, a, a, a local mercenary organization, a banditry, that you can, uh, you order him and goes everywhere and so and so on. This is a very good servant. And a servant like that, he will never find. Uh, plus coming from a minority, very a insecure. Minority, dependent, gets oxygen from external forces and so on. It had been for a very long time um, in bed in life support machine and so on. So it is their kit, which is in service of them. Now they were uh, suddenly with the popular uprising, they, even didn't, they couldn't even analyze. They thought that it is it will stop, it will crash the popular uprising. And finally, even uh, uh, when it collapses and it has to be removed from the power, it is by force. They force them. They think when people force on them their will. And finally, this minority have to be removed from the capital and go to Tigray. But while they are in Tigray, the image building they have built for the TPLF, in comparison with the image building they have built about Prime Minister Abi, it is uncomparable. That it is Abi as if it is a very weak a preacher, uh, his image very soft, his speak is very soft and so on. So these Western think tanks, journalists and so on, they believed their own lies and they start uh, reading their own false Bible. They never understood the psychology, the anger, the, the, the aspiration of this young man who became prime minister and the population of Ethiopia. And they never also understood that the hate the majority of Ethiopian people have against these minority uh, uh, gangs. They have never even analyzed that. So they were very surprised and shocked. And finally, the, when they see every step the prime minister is taking, they cannot analyze rationally because they are intoxicated by their old lies of their own. Mm. That point of view, it is more or less, uh, the, the, I call it the Shah syndrome, where 
until the very end in 1979, uh, as the Shah's regime in Iran was collapsing, the, the intelligence agencies of the West and uh, the political establishments, the United States and chiefly, they never thought that uh, the end of the Shah would come that quickly. But uh, when it came, they <laughs> took them by surprise, didn't it? Indeed, because they, they 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 don't analyze and they are not able to analyze. This is this is what Barbara Tugman says. History continues that the unintended consequence of 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 the uh, uh, the consequence of the policy of the regime uh, and the deep anger among the masses that they cannot they cannot analyze. They have no that uh, thermometer for that. So they always believe the lies they have painted. And they wanted to continue. It is an easy way also. So the crisis group and all these elements, they are very lazy parasite individuals who cannot do even their own homework, live in a very nice places, very far from a war, and then predict on the future of other people. And they have no uh, 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 dialectical understanding of the situation inside of the nation, like Ethiopia or Iran or any, uh, any place. The other the most important pillar you could see from them, once the prime minister of uh, Ethiopia have resumed uh, uh, his relationship with Eritrea, developed a strategical thinking with Eritrea and Somalia, having a regional concept of peace, and then with that concept also regional development and so on. This, they don't like this kind of concept because their agent will be buried and the whole of Africa will take a new step, a new development, a new relationship among the peoples and the nation in the whole of Africa. And the purpose to maintain such kind of minority regime, who is not even organically connected to the people of Tigray, who is organically connected to them, a gang, and they are in service, they have always have to paint to them as if they are very good, they are democrat, they have a two-digit development, they invite them in G20 and so and so on, and this. That image building, the media and the think tank bill, it was collapsed. Mm -hmm. So suddenly now... In a way, the TPLF was a subservient tool to perpetuate uh, constant instability in the, yes. in the Horn of Africa region. Indeed. For and Western interests. Yes, to control. Imagine now, TPLF is the only country uh, who exports the so-called peacekeeping courts. Can you imagine? I mean, I mean, 4,000 troops in Somalia, I mean, Southern Sudan, and this and this. Ethiopia is a peacemaker, important. That image which they have created, a lie which they have created for themselves, they believed it. But their, ser their, their major servant is just, it is a primitive bandits who have no any vision to their own people, and not only that, to to the region and to the country Ethiopia. And in that way that it is, the prime minister, he defeat them because also the Ethiopian people hates them. And he knows that. In the beginning, he is the one who has stopped the anger of Ethiopian people that they might even take the justice in their hand and he canalized it for other things. But now you see, once the prime minister declared uh, 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 war against these bandits, how the Ethiopians from every uncle, from every walk of life, united to eliminate TPLF. This by itself is an example to the, the deep level of, uh, deep level of hate, hate for the, the TPLF dictatorship. And this is what TPLF never understood. But one has to understand, TPLF is a factitious organization. It is because as any other thieves and, uh, and, and, and gangs and bandits, Banditry is a culture of TPLA, and it is not also organically connected to Tigrayan people. And you could see that easily they could lose. It is false image building. Even in the time of the struggle, they have never struggled more than three years. All the others are lies and creating confusion among the people and so and so on. Very narrow, very backward, middle-aged thinking uh, 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 people. But uh, I don't think they had always been reality, but it is consequence of history has brought them this monkey to the throne, but now it is over. Okay, so uh, 
you've brought us uh, to the current situation uh, while you were there of course the the conflict had erupted uh, what was the sense in uh, in inside in the capital when that is the attack came? very good a lot of people ask me the sense is like this uh, two years and a half these people from tigray they are bombarding they took them people making parade and so and so and so on and for innocent uh, viewer, they thought they are strong. When I met uh, 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 the president of Somalia region, uh, the first time after the, uh, one day I was I was with him, I told him the boil uh, the, the the water is boiling now, and there will be a military conflict in the north. He was surprised. I said it's inevitable. At the end, that TPLF must be crushed, and TPLF. Uh, the Prime Minister uh, is going to wage a war against them, and we have to support him because these parasites must be eliminated. All other contradictions among the Ethiopian people can be solved through discussion, and that is a democratic contradiction. But the main contradiction we have is with these guns, which have looted, killed this country, and brought also the whole region into problem. So if a conflict comes, must be mobilized correctly, and they must be defeated. The next day, they attack themselves because you could see these people are not rational. They don't think. So finally, they have seen that they are cornered and cornered and cornered. Everything they took, the prime minister was smarter than them. And finally, they committed suicide. As they are always, they think in suicide manner, they committed suicide and mm. they attacked the army. And now they are in this situation, comrade. Uh, Elias. I was not surprised. In fact, I was happy that in this situation they are and they have to be eliminated because the, the region must have peace. And these people, you could see that it is, they are irrational. They are they are really uh, uh, drunk with their with their own lives. Uh, in fact, they were defeated with, uh, in real sense of the term. Defeated when Prime Minister Abi accepted and peace and went to Asmara. Finally, the, pre uh, the president came to uh, Eritrea to Addis. He went to Asmara several times. The same happened with the Eritrean delegation, and so on and so on. So the atmosphere, but knowledge. The state of war between Eritrea and Ethiopia was good for the TPLF to maintain their Always, hegemony. Yes, Ethiopia. that is yeah. one of the major pillars to maintain power. The last 22 years, they survived as uh, having an oxygen that it is the state of war between Eritrea and Ethiopia have to be maintained in order to maintain the power in Addis Ababa. And this is, you could see, all their uh, think tank, all their uh, 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 friends, so-called friends who live at the expense and the war of uh, and, and conflict in our region, the, uh, uh, the so-called Europeans and Americans friends of them, they also gambled on that, gambled on that, and that was their major objective. Ethiopia and Eritrea should not have peace. We have to maintain like that. So in this way, that TPLF with a false nationalism, there is no nationalism for that matter, you can keep the situation under control. But that was collapsed. First so with, with that uh, explanation, it makes sense why they launched the rocket, uh, whatever, missile attack on, on Asmara, Yes, to drag uh, recently. Yes, to, dr to drag Eritrea into the war because their concept is that if Eritrea will be involved, it will be nationalism. These people they live in the Middle Ages, uh, Comrade Delia. They don't even follow the evolution of the thinking. Uh, uh, so they thought that if it, Eritrea will, dra will be dragging and so on uh, uh, into the war, and then we can drum. Uh, the drama of the nationalism, Ethiopia is invaded, and so on. And, and, and they invaded the Eritrea in the past also, in order to, because they are seeing themselves are weakened inside Ethiopia. They are a minority sitting in a huge country, when they realize they needed an enemy, and that enemy is that they have to create at the expense of the people of Eritrea, and so on and so on. So but the major difference between 1998 and uh, now... Now, of course, and now is it's already that... dead. They're out of power in Ethiopia now. Yes, it is like uh, 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 when we were kids to learn Amharic, there is a book called Mamo the Fool. And Mamo the Fool's book, they really believed it. 
and uh, probably their capacity of understanding is not uh, uh, bigger than a child of seven years old, and they repeat the same stories. And finally, with their own dreams, they have been trapped, and now they are in the process of elimination. And this is thanks uh, that these guns, they will be removed soon and brought to justice, and the region will have for the first time uh, uh, so, uh, uh, a good relationship among the peoples, and we will be busy working very hard, reconciling among the all Ethiopian people and the all people in the region, and build and work very hard to build a regional economy, a regional peace. We have suffered too much, and now we have to take care of our peace. We have to think much wiser and, and further, and that we live a peaceful region. And so the concept of civil war also it is their invention. Uh, uh, their invention, in a sense, if it is civil war, they wanted to say that there must be an intervention and so on, that NGOs must run and so on. They are now making a lot of drama as if it is, uh, this is, they didn't do that kind of things. When when Somali people, they killed 70,000 of them, 1 million of them, they were chased and concert, in concentration camp, in the Bab uh, camp and so, and so on. No think tank had shouted, no BBC had shouted. No, all these elements, they didn't exist when this happened. They just put one logo, Shabab, finish. That Somalis are Islamists, Somalis are Al-Qaeda, and so on and so on, and they closed it with this logo. Now they are crying that it is, there is a crisis, there will be a civil war, and all and all these neighboring countries that want to intervene. And this, they are trying to frighten themselves, not us. And I'm sure within a week time, that it is that these things will be behind us and Ethiopia will start a new. Uh, it is incredible the level of uh, disinformation in the Western media is uh, unbelievable. It's true, unbelievable. I was I was watching two days uh, when I arrived the same evening. Uh, the Flemish uh, television they brought a so-called journalist who have been I don't know in Addis Ababa two time and he maybe talked with this. Uh, 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 to grow a ruling class and so on, as if it is like a Bible here it is, and we are uh, 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 to the uh, to the masses here, and particularly the Flanders had always been uh, uh, very much attached to the TPLF, and uh, even Flemish Development Corporation money in the name of Ethiopia was given to them. So because of their ethnicist thinking it, uh, itself, you know, it fits to their psychology. The others are Malcolm Plout and all these, and the so-called uh, uh, opposition of Eritrea, which were entertained in, a, in Addis Ababa by the TPLF and so on. They are also equally evaporated like the TPLF. And we are so very happy. We, with the, the end game of TPLF, the, de the final demise of the TPLF, these so-called uh, pundits, experts, uh, journalists, they will be out of business, so to speak. Indeed, they will be out of business, and we have to do our job, the whole of Africa Television uh, and all of us. To make sure that they are permanently out of business. <laughs> permanently out of their business, and uh, 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 and we have to raise the consciousness of the Ethiopian people everywhere, whether inside and outside and then try to build the confidence building among the Ethiopian people, that it is all this false consciousness which is in their mind and false problems must be removed and we have to reality and cooperate and work together to change our life and the whole of Africa. As an economic unity, we have to be one. We are one people. We have the same history. We have the same psychology. We have the same culture. Therefore, we have to strengthen as much as possible that we can live a very good and safe area for our children, uh, for the coming uh, generations. And we have to be very militant and stronger now. The more they are defeated, the more their propaganda will be very loud. Uh, our Horn of Africa television, its role will be even much stronger than before. It's not only informing, rising the consciousness of the people, bringing the, the different uh, people of Ethiopia and the whole of Africa in the same table, having a discussion, analyzing what happened the last 30 years, and then beyond, it is, it is how these people came, the role of Eritrean revolution in the change in Ethiopia, and so on, because they have locked 
totally the mind of the population and the knowledge the young generation had about the struggle of Eritrean people, the struggle of all other peoples, the changes who have came, the abuse and misuse uh, 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 which has uh, happened under the Wayane. We have to clarify clearly and educate, organize the population. That is my appeal to all people of the whole of Africa. And if you have a difference, it is a secondary difference. We don't have a fundamental difference. And uh, this secondary difference, it can be resolved through discussions. If we have a uh, false illusion, we have to remove the false illusion and see the reality. And uh, uh, I'm very happy. I have been there. I was explaining to a lot of people. Of course, the consciousness is very, very poor. We will raise it. And uh, now we will raise it open, free from terrorist groups like the, uh, the TPLF. And people can move from one place to another place. We will build the confidence building, people to people relation between Ethiopian people and Eritrea and between Eritrea, Ethiopia, and Somalia. And I'm thinking that it is, if it is possible and I'm able, that it is for September uh, uh, 2030, uh, 2021, I would really like to take a cultural music uh, group to Asmara, tour around to Eritrea, show uh, through culture our relationship, and so on, and maybe also other Ethiopian uh, uh, cultural groups, and so on. We have to facilitate that and kill this virus, which brought to that region for 60 years conflict problem. Those who live 30,000 kilometers from us and live in a very peaceful area, but engineer war and conflict uh, in our region, we suffer too much, too much, enough is enough. We have to start a new Horn of Africa. And I thank all of you, the people of Horn of Africa TV, and all my listeners, I will tell, uh, I'm appealing to you to think good, to hold each other. We are families, and this family must, our bond is stronger than, than, than mountains, and we have to build a new generation with a new vision. This is my appeal. Well, Thank you very much for that uh, uh, excellent uh, report from the ground. You have clarified a lot of uh, matters for our viewers, hopefully. But we will revisit this issue. Uh, uh, before we wrap up, a quick question to you. Uh, the pundits, the Western experts, uh, analysts have been saying protracted war. And so have been the TPLF uh, kleptocrats uh, in hiding now. Uh, at the beginning, they were saying, no, this is going to be a long protracted war. Uh, it's not going to be won easily that it's going to widen. What does your crystal ball show you? I mean, uh, if you were to see into the next week, uh, would this be like, uh, this conflict be over quickly? Or uh, do you see a protracted war or uh, the end of uh, TPLF uh, around the corner? First of all, this element, uh, they didn't analyze uh, uh, TPLF properly, and they didn't analyze also the people of Tigray. TPLF for a very long time is not an organic uh, segment of Tigray people. It is an element of a parasite in the name of Tigray, a bandit in the name of Tigray. In fact, what they did is that they committed crime by the name of Tigray and by the name of the people of Tigray. I don't think any rational Tigrayan will go and, and, and die for them. Uh, these are looters, uh, criminals. And uh, they also underestimated, overestimated themselves because they don't read reality. Oh, uh, they, they read their fantasy. I think now they are in circle. And uh, if they don't surrender, they will, they will uh, enter and capture them. Their time is over. There is no way one can reverse it. So those who think protracted war, they think in their mind. Maybe there is a protracted war in their own mind, and, and that is their wishful thinking. In reality, TPLF have disappeared. It's not a political organization, it's a bandit, and it has no a just cause. To have a just cause, it is something else. This is the war which is TPLF waging against the Prime Minister of Ethiopia and Ethiopian general in the region, is unjust war. 
And I'm just and it would be a, a final liberation for the people of Tigray too, don't you think? Indeed, indeed, a final liberation for the people of Tigray that they can live a normal life from now onward and they can participate with their brothers and sisters in Ethiopia. They are As equal citizens, free from hate, free from Absolutely. fear. Absolutely. I will be in the, pro the, in the front line once that it is liberated is to go to Tigray and try to discuss with the young people of Tigray and so on. I have already my books are ready. I'm the first to go to Makale University to even to every villages and so on through translation, even though unfortunately I don't speak their language, to explain and to share my opinion with them. This is our brothers and sisters and so on. And I appeal for the Prime Minister Abi. I'm sure he will be very careful. The transitional government uh, of Tigray will be installed. There must be serious people. There must be people of the masses. They must be closer to the people to explain and so on and so on. We don't want another thieves who just will only think for themselves and to fill their pocket. The Tigray people have problems. These people, they didn't even, uh, uh, not even able, the gang, to give uh, uh, drinking water in Makali. Majority of Tigrayan people are poor. Their young people are migrating in masses. We, we have seen it in the YouTube, in Saudi prisons, how they are suffering. In Yemen, they are suffering, dying in the sea, in Sudan, in Libya, here in Brussels. Most of the Ethiopians are Tigrayans, young people between 25 and 30. So I think this is, will be our second task. And I appeal to Ethiopian intellectuals, political forces, and so on, please reduce your gap, see the things as it is, and we have to embrace the majority of the Graham people. They are our brothers, and we have to march with them equally to rebuild a new nation, a new whole of Africa. That is my appeal also to everybody. I wholeheartedly support you in that appeal. And if I may add, uh, we here uh, in the Horn of Africa TV welcome our uh, Tigrayan brothers and sisters to come and have a dialogue with us, whether it's in English or uh, Amharic or Tigrinya to, to calm the situation and to usher in a new era of peace for, uh, for uh, the people of Tigray, uh, for the whole Ethiopia for that matter, and uh, Ethiopia, Eritrea, Somalia, Sudan, and South Sudan in this uh, new uh, era of peace we are opening. So thank you very much for, for that message, uh, Dr. Mohammed. It's good to have you back. And we shall continue this discussion, inshallah, in the coming weeks and uh, focus uh, and observe sharply developments there. Uh, I'm very glad that uh, you clarified a lot of issues for us. Uh, during your absence, there has been a lot of disinformation. And uh, I had to take up uh, the baton uh, and fill up for, for you. And, uh, and I'm just happy that you, you're back. And uh, uh, with that, uh, we wish uh, Ethiopia to restore peace uh, as the earliest at the earliest uh, possible time uh, and uh, so that we all the peoples of Horn of Africa can move forward thank you very much uh, Mohammed thank you very much comrade Elias uh, thank you for what you did in my absence the Horn of Africa is the light is shining uh, we have to develop our confidence and walk tall as we have been before. And uh, I'm very happy, man. Uh, I'm Great. Happy to see this. Yeah. Thank you. Comrade. Great. We need that optimism of the will, as a uh, great Antonio Gramsci used to say. Uh, with that, dear viewers, we've come to the end of our discussion today. Thank you for following. Uh, do subscribe and share. And uh, until next time, I am Elias Amare, and for my friend Muhammad Hassan, salam. <laughs> <laughs>